Hello, hi Rajivji. This is Kamal here from Birasangi.com and a warm welcome to you today once again on our show. Always a pleasure, Kamalji. Thank you very much. Pranam. Pranam Rajivji. And today we uh, have a listener here with us who has a query and we just thought we'd get her on conference. So we have Poonam here today with us. So Poonam, uh, welcome you to the show at the very outset. Thank you. Uh, so we have Rajivji here with us. Rajivji. Okay. Um, hi Rajivji. हाँ जी अब पूनम जी अब पूनम है कि दर्शना है आई एम लिटिल कंफ्यूज अगेन आई एम दर्शना एक्चुअली पूनम इज माय सिस्टर ओके ऑल राइट दर्शना जी सो एज आई अंडरस्टैंड यू आर इन द यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स ऑन ए टूरिस्ट वीजा एम आई करेक्ट या आई एम ऑन बी वन बी टू वीजा एक्चुअली ओके No problem at all. But let me let me just first understand a little bit more about your visa. When you uh, when did you first obtain your visa? It's a ten year visa. Uh, when it's a B one B two. It's a business visa. When did you first obtain it? When was it stamped on your passport? It was like about two years before. Okay. Two years back. I'll tell you what the reason for yeah. my question was. and the reason i'm giving all yeah. this background is because uh, some of the people who are listening in may may find it relevant even though it is not relevant for you so what happens is a b1 b2 is a mixed use visa but typically uh, very few times a consulate just give typically only b2 or b1 uh, they usually give a mixed use visa but if i go to the consulate and i say well look i want to go see the statue of liberty or i want to uh go go see i don't know i want to go to la just for a tourism and then i come here and start doing business they may not like it okay mm -hmm. but if it was given if it was given 2 years ago and i'm i'm sure you've come come and gone a few times between then and now is that is that correct okay in, in that case i feel that if you were to make attempts to do some business it is not going to go negatively against you in future immigration cases so first thing i i wanted to examine was the purpose of your visit and if in any way doing any kind of business activity conflicts with that purpose the answer to that question is it does not appear to be so you should be okay in establishing a business now there is a difference between setting up a company and running a company okay setting up a company is the easy part uh, excuse me we have a fire engine outside give me one sec okay so setting up a company is a different matter anybody here who's in the united states on a b1 or a b1 b2 visa can set up a company they can um, uh, enter into contracts they can um, even uh, lease uh, for example business premises the only thing they cannot do is they cannot actually run the business from within the united states can you run your business in the us while you are sitting in india or um, or 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 sweden or any other country and the answer is yes but you cannot do it from within the united states okay now <clears throat> like because i don't have an ssn i have a question here i yes. don't have an ssn so how would i be able to work because and what is the use of the company if i'm not being able to work through the ah uh, that's a question we'll have to direct to the lawmakers <clears throat> why what is the use of being able to form a company if you cannot run it from within the united states and the answer is right. i don't make the laws i only obey them okay so right, right. so what people a lot of people b1 is used or b1 b2 is many times used to um, come and um, participate in trade shows shake hands with people establish contacts and typically when you have done that then you establish your business mm -hmm. and for unfortunately for countries like india the choices are relatively limited but for other countries uh, there can be visas like e2 treaty investor visa uh, such as pakistan has that bunch of countries have that <clears throat> you can actually invest money and it doesn't have to be a huge investment it can be a relatively small investment and you can get an e2 visa india doesn't have that okay so what are the choices for indians if they want to do business in the united states well 
Uh, one choice, obvious choice is an investor visa EB-5 where you are putting $500,000 in a um, defined area such as um, an area which is rural, such as an area which is a high unemployment. So if you want to start your own business, you can put in $500,000 and have a business plan that will create 10 American jobs over two years. That's one option. <clears throat> if you want to open a business in a regular area, you can uh, invest a million dollars and do that and create 10 American jobs. Now, I want to add here that the money can be borrowed. It can be a personal loan. Some of it can be a promissory note, which is um, um, secured by personal assets even outside the United States. So there are all these options. But if you're not looking to invest money, like in your business, I suspect you're not looking to invest a lot of money right now. There is really no easy way to run your business from within the United States. What you can do is, if you have a family member uh, who is a green card holder or a U.S. citizen or otherwise authorized to work in the United States, they can manage the company for you while you give them instructions and you own the company from outside the United States. That's perfectly legal. Okay. Yeah, Darshana, I think uh, you mentioned that you uh, get CPA se bhi mile and uh, uh, so uh, is there any contradiction there? Waha, unse jo aapki baat hui aur aap jo Rajivji se baat hui any contradictions? Would you like to? Right, right. Hello. We can establish a con. Hello. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. The CPA informed me. He told me that I can open a company and uh, I can open a business account and I can work. It's not an issue. Uh, okay. Actually, the problem here is what the CPA knows, I don't know, and what I know, the CPA does not know. Okay? Right, so, right. CPA can tell you about taxes. They can tell you to a certain extent about corporate laws, but they don't know anything right. about immigration laws. Whether or not you can work right. is my domain. It is not the CPA's domain. That's right. <laughs> so, the information you've been given is incorrect. Okay. That's right. I that. Yeah. Even I had the same doubts, actually. Gee, and okay. you had you, you you are a smart lady, ma'am. You had the right doubts. <laughs> so Rajiv, your best uh, darshana, kya kar sakti hai? Agar wo United States mein rehna cha, um, agar United States mein wo business karna chahti hai, what is the best she can do? Um, I see some positive movement of the administration towards delivering on their vision of making United States of America a country a welcoming to entrepreneurs. I see some movement. For example, mm -hmm. there are some regulations and I'm actually working on uh, preparing a presentation on them uh, where um, uh, spouses of H-1 visa holders will be given work authorization. Right, um, right. Some, uh, some regulations have been put into place for outstanding researchers and professors to make things a little easier for them to be able to get their green cards. I see some positive movement. To answer your question, under the current scheme of regulations and the laws, there is nothing Darshanaji can do to run the company within the United States. Okay, okay. okay. Rajiv, well, I have another question in mind, actually. Yeah, uh, yeah. I have a friend here who is an American citizen, and uh, she is going to work with me with 5% of her uh, profit margin. And uh, I'll be holding 95%. So in that case, I'll be the owner, but in paper, she'll be like uh, taking the 5%. Absolutely. But remember one thing. You should not work while you're on the U.S. soil. So in my view, this is the way I look at the regulations. In my view, mm -hmm. if you are sitting in India yes. and you're looking over the company's accounts, you're looking or deciding what to do and giving her instructions, your friend instructions, that's perfectly fine. Right. But the moment you land on the U.S. soil, let's say one year down your back, mm -hmm. don't do any work while you're in the United mm -hmm. States. You can come in. I don't see. I don't see any problem with that, Darshana ji. For you to have a friend run the company while you own the company ninety-five percent or even a hundred percent in India is absolutely legal. Okay. Okay. What you need to do is. What you need to do is before I forget to point this out. What you need to do is make sure with the CPA that your uh, taxes are straightened out. 
where the taxes will be paid. Um, India has treaties with the United States about double taxation relief. Uh, so make sure that the tax aspects are straightened out and also make sure from your country, in this case it happens to be India, there are no regulatory requirements for owning foreign companies. I don't think there is a problem, but Reserve Bank of India might have some rules and make sure you, you check it out on the Indian side as well. So any, any more questions on that, uh, Darshna? That's all. No, I'm absolutely fine. <laughs> okay. I mean, I have uh, discussed with an attorney as well, and he had the same suggestion. So okay. it's like, uh, yeah, he gave me the same, same suggestion. Sure. Uh, I think uh, all your doubts at rest. All the best from us yeah. for your new uh, you. endeavor. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Darshna, for being a part of the show. Thank you. It's a nice fun day. Thank you. Same here. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And uh, can, I, can, I, can I put on just one more question, please? Yeah, definitely, Darshana. Okay. Yeah, of course. Uh, actually, I just wanted to know, as a speaker told me that uh, maybe if I'm working with a partnership uh, with, a, with one of my friends, after that, maybe after just uh, one or two years later, can I apply for a green card? You cannot. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, why is it okay. right? Uh, unless you have an investment of a half a million to a million dollars, oh, depending upon okay. where you are. Because right now there is no visa for or maybe them. If the company, or maybe if the company turnover is quite good, then if it, if it is possible? Everything that is uh, green card oriented is based upon your, um, it's based upon your, 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 your investment. Now, there is a visa called L1 visa, L1 visa. Uh, and I, I, um, I omitted to mention that because that was not an obvious option in your case. Uh, but I'll let me talk to you about that as well. That's an important visa. L1 visa is very good for existing businesses in, the, in India. If you're an existing business and you have a good presence and you're, you're, you can classify yourself as an international manager and move to the United States as long as the company in India continues to do business, uh, you can move to the United States and start your business here and once the business achieves a certain um, degree of stability, you can actually get your green card within a year, which is very, very good. So L1 visa is an option to keep in the back of your mind. The only problem with L1s is small companies have a problem getting L1s because government is inclined to say, well, L1s are not meant for people who are just supervisors. They are meant for people who are executive or managerial level people in the sense of, uh, you know, uh, one, one good example of that is for example, you are in the jewelry business. If you are actually mm -hmm. doing the right. ju jewelry design, you're not a manager. But if you are managing mm -hmm. the work of seven designers, then you are a manager. Right. So if you are involved... In I the don't have that. We do for designers, but we don't disclose our designers because there's a tendency we cannot disclose our clientele. Well, let me ask you a question. We work for designers. We how, many, designers. how many people do you employ in India? How many people work for you? That's a good okay. size. That's a good sized operation. So if you if you if you opened an operation in the United States and came to a level of 10, 20 people, you should be able to get L1 and then a green card based upon that. That's a very good option. My apologies, I I forgot that option simply because we were talking about uh, just the startup of a small level business. But if you have a uh, appreciable sized business, which you do, then when you start a business here, you can actually come to the United States on an L1 visa as a startup. Okay, and okay. in a in a okay. year you can get that extended uh, for three more years and then three more years and in the in the interim you can also get a green card done. Right. Okay. 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 I can transfer from B one B two to L one. I can do that. I would not. I, can apply for that. I would not advise you to convert from B to L within the United States, but once your business okay. business takes off, it is certainly an option. Right. The reason consulates don't like people converting from B to L is they consider that as misuse of B visa because you come in um, right. representing right. that you're just going for a short visit and then you're trying to convert to a one year or a three year visa. They don't like that typically. But you can go outside USA and come back on L1 visa. Okay, okay. So that's good news for you, Darshna. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anything else you would like to add up on that, uh, Rajuji? Any more questions, Darshna? So that's all. That is like, uh, I have like uh, many questions like sorted out. So that's really good for me. Excellent. Well, you're welcome Thank to call you. back. We'll be happy to talk to you again. Certainly, yes. Thanks. All right.
Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. Bye bye, uh, Darshan. Haji, uh, Kamal ji, are you? We have a few more queries. Can we uh, take it? Take them up today? Ah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Uh, please go ahead, uh, Kamal ji. Yeah, we have another listener here who's written in about uh, her uh, sister who's in India, and she says that uh, the sister in India is an artist, and how best can she? Uh, come to the United States, how can she, uh, you know, uh, come to the United States on an artist, uh, if, there's a, if there's a visa for an artist, is there a green card she can uh, get as an artist and come to the United States and be here? Well, there are all kinds of visas for artists, depending upon what they are coming for. One example is the B visa, which we talked about, uh, mm -hmm. where if somebody is just coming, for example, to to give performances as demonstrations, they could use B-1 visa. And on a B-1 visa, you can receive uh, money for your ticket and uh, some amount of stipend for staying here. Uh, you can be given uh, free boarding and lodging, uh, room and board. So those kind of things can be done on a tourist visa. Then there are traditional artists. There are visas okay. like P visas for traditional artists, for example, Bharatanatyam performers, who are coming mm -hmm. here to teach or to perform, they have their option. Then there are people who are nationally famous or internationally famous. They could come okay. on certain other kinds of visas. For green cards, the options are rather limited. There is the national interest waiver option for artists who are going to contribute in a major way to the uh, cultural milieu of the United States of America, or uh, artists who are nationally or internationally famous on a consistent basis they could have a green card um, uh, through EB1 category. So it depends. First thing I would look at an artist is, is it a short-term visit, non-profit, then go for B visa. If it is for-profit, look at OP visas. All this information is on our website. P as in Peter. Um, if it is long-term, look at national interest waiver and extraordinary ability aliens. Excuse me. <coughs> mm -hmm. So these are some of the options that they would have depending upon their resume and their desire. Mm -hmm. All right, okay. So uh, Rajuti, uh, while you were talking to Darshana, you also mentioned about the uh, spouse visa, which we've been talking about, uh, you know, hoping that uh, the immigration reforms bill would have something more of this kind. So I was just uh, thinking, does it also extend to siblings? Uh, is there any way that siblings could get, uh, you know, uh, the same kind of uh, the same kind of uh, visa like uh, the spouse visa that is there where uh, the spouse can work okay what you're asking me is the spouse of a US citizen can come on to the United States or even a fiance on a k1 or a k3 visa is there a similar yeah. option for for siblings the answer is no uh, if you apply for your brother or sister it typically takes between 10 and 13 years for them to come here. Um, so that's really not a good option. And Senate in the proposed immigration bill that they passed had actually mm -hmm. uh, planned to eliminate that category altogether, if I remember oh, correctly. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. So, so these were the queries, Rajivji, today. Uh, anything latest on the immigration reforms bill that you would like to update our listeners with? I just want to take two minutes to talk about um, the proposed regulations that have been published in the Federal Register are uh, giving mm -hmm. work authorization to H4 people. There, is, there are other things in the regulations, but two things I want to point out. One is the H4 work authorization, and the other one is some additional provisions for um, uh, outstanding researchers and professors. I intend to do a much longer conversation on this, but for now I just want to give a quick update to people. H4, okay. spouses of H4 holders would be allowed work authorization under two circumstances. One, if the H1 holder's I-140 is approved. So if the okay. I-140, which is step two in the green card, is approved, the spouse can then get H4 um, work authorization. But remember one thing, these regulations are still under consideration. They will be, they are open for public comment till July 11th or 12th then USCIS will probably take a month or two and they'll finally, then they'll implement the final regulations. So it's not happened already. It may be a few weeks away, but it's coming fast towards us. Good to know. Uh, I intend to make some comments on behalf of the community on these regulations. We are allowed to okay. comment because it's for public comment. So okay, okay. One, one circumstance under which H4 people can get work authorization 
is if uh, the H1 spouse has got the I-140 approval. Second is okay. if they have gotten their H1 extension beyond six years based upon uh, AC21, which is American Competitiveness in the 21st Century Act, a law which allows extension beyond six years. So if H1 extension has been approved beyond six years or I-140 is approved, your spouse can obtain employment authorization by filing Form I-765. Typically, these extensions will be given based upon the discretion of USCIS, which they have said one to two years, typically. Okay, so that okay. In, in a nutshell is where we stand. There is a lot more to add to it. I will do it as and when I get some time. I will make some videos on this or make a presentation for you folks. We'll take it from there. Uh, on, okay. the, on the international, uh, I'm sorry, on the outstanding researchers and professors, one of the problems was there were only six categories of evidence we could present. Okay. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. USCIS has said, well, that's too narrow. What we'll do is, in case this outstanding professor or researcher has other evidence that tends to demonstrate that they are internationally or nationally famous, go ahead and submit mm -hmm. that and we'll consider it. We will not confine ourselves to only six criteria that we have mentioned. That's an encouraging thing. I'll give you one example. We had, I, I evaluated a case last week in which uh, this lady had given uh, 40 or 45 invited talks. She was very famous internationally, but because she was okay. in social sciences, her number of publications was relatively small. So now okay. we can actually give evidence of things like invited talks uh, or other similar evidence, which tends to show that the person is widely recognized as an expert in their field. All right. Okay. So, Rajiji, thanks for the update on the Immigration Reforms Bill. I think we'll have more to talk about that next week. Thank you so much, Rajiji, once again for uh, all your time. Every other Thursday at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we host um, free community conference calls. Everybody is welcome to join. Some people post questions ahead of time. You can take membership in our forums. Uh, all of the details are there on our website, immigration.com. You can take membership uh, ahead of time and, um, you know, it's instantaneous. It happens right away and post your questions beforehand or you can just log in. Uh, the phone number in all are provided 202-800-8394-1230 Eastern Standard Time every other Thursday. We have uh, free apps for both Apple iOS platform for your iPhones and iPads as well as for Android. Just look for immigration.com, immigration.com, the period dot, and uh, the application should show up.